This call is being recorded. Welcome, everyone to the God and Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host and guest teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Eat Church in Harvest, Alabama. Um, I apologize right off the top that if you hear uh, a lawnmower going in the background, uh, I'm on my back porch where I normally are. Uh, giving the lesson normally and uh, someone is cutting their grass on Sunday morning well that's what people do and but praise God that um, we can still come on the line this morning and and uh, just still be a blessing um, today's lesson comes from um, the book of Acts Acts chapter 10 uh, starting at verse 19 through verse 33 let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you've allowed us to see another day. We thank you, Lord, that, that you woke us up this morning. We thank you that you clothed us in our right minds and gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, we praise your holy name because you are God and you're God all by yourself. Lord, we ask you this day as we get ready to study your word that you anoint afresh. Anoint the Heavenly Father that uh, the words out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be acceptable in your sight. Anoint the Heavenly Father this conference call and, and, and this technology, the Heavenly Father. Anoint afresh this Facebook and all of its technology. And then, Lord, we ask you to anoint all those that are listening in now on Facebook or on, on uh, the conference call and those that will be listening to this recording in the future. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, and we ask you right now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you bless everyone that is listening in and everyone uh, that's going to listen later. Bless now, dear Lord, that we might not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. And then, Lord, we just ask you, be God. So bless everybody around the world. Be God and heal everybody around the world. Lord, we ask you to deliver everybody around the world. Lord, just have your way and heal everybody. Deliver, set free, save their souls all around the world. We thank you for this, God, because we know that that's your desire. You desire that everybody might be saved that everybody might come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ and the remission of their sins. We thank you now, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Ooh, this is one of those wonderful, wonderful lessons, and we're going to start um, by reading the text. Um, the text comes from Acts chapter 10, starting at verse 19, and I'm going to be reading first out of a New King James Version, and um, as we go through the text, I'm going to read a little bit out of the um, uh, New Living Translation. And it says, while Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, and go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Hallelujah. Hold on just a minute, y'all. See if I can break some of this noise, because that's too much noise this morning. There we go. That that mud, mud or some of that grass cut noise. Okay, hallelujah. Amen. Um, arise, therefore, and go, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the, to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nations of the Jews, was divinely instructed by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. 
and the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how law unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I went, as soon as I was sent for. I asked then. For what reason have you sent for me? So Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. At the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. Behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa. And call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. And when he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now, therefore, we are all present before you to hear all the things commanded you by God. Amen, amen, amen. And, and the, the, the title for today's lesson is a Divine Appointment, uh, Peter and Cornelius, A Divine Appointment. In, in today's society, we, 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 we find that, that we have um, these people called event planners. Event planners is an is a, is, is a, a, uh, industry that, that is... Uh, Work over billions of dollars uh, in the United States alone, where people are planning events. They these these event planners put together uh, uh, parties, weddings, and and other gatherings, and and they plan the events. They lay everything out. They put all of the 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 the, the ornaments on the tables. They arrange the chairs. They arrange the guests in orders. They send out the invitations and then they get the RSVPs back. And, 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 and these, these events that they have end up being appointments for people to, to mingle with one another, to, 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 to network with one another. And they come together and then they go out from those parties and those weddings and those other events and they go out and do the things that they do together. Well, God, is the greatest event planner in the world. And he set up a divine appointment between Peter and Cornelius, two people that most likely would never ever come together in an appointment and to meet one another. God put them together. That the word of God, that the good news of Jesus Christ may be spread to the Gentiles. We know that Peter was walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, was taught by Jesus, and now God is leading Peter to a divine appointment with this man Cornelius, a centurion soldier, a Roman centurion soldier, a Gentile. This, this here is the first encounter of the European Gentile. Uh, coming into a relationship with God, coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We've had other Gentiles that were were uh, 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 taught by God or, or received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. We talked about the eunuch on a couple of weeks ago. That eunuch was was uh, uh, taught by Philip, 
on, on, on the road and that, that Ethiopian eunuch who was under the uh, 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 Queen Candace was brought into the fold. He wasn't a Jew. He, he, he might have been a Jewish postulate, but because he was a eunuch, most likely he wasn't, but he was converted. So, so the gospel had to spread it now from, from, from Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and now it was going to the uttermost parts of the world. That, 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 that the word of God had now reached Africa with the Ethiopian eunuch, and now it was going to reach Europe through this one named Cornelius. Oh, hallelujah. God is an inclusive God. When he has a party, when he has an event, he wants everybody included. That's how heaven is going to be. There in heaven, there will not be a white section or a black section or a yellow section or a brown section. Everybody in heaven will be included. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Oh, hallelujah. This is that lesson. Talking about this divine appointment to include, include people, not exclude people. We today in the church have a tendency of excluding folks from our services. You know, most churches uh, uh, on Sunday morning uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the Sunday hour, uh, 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 the word of God is going out is so separated. You got black churches, you got white churches, you got Hispanic churches, you got the 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 the, the Chinese, the Korean churches, and all those the Japanese churches. You got all these different churches who all are calling on the same God, but nobody is including one another. They they everybody wants to be in their own culture, but Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, he transcends culture. He's the God that, that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't say he so loved one particular people. So he's inclusive and he is setting up this divine appointment with Peter and Cornelius that the Gentiles, might be in included into the people of the way. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we look at this lesson, our key verse for today comes from verse 28, and I'm going to read it out of the uh, uh, New Living Translation. Peter told them, you know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile's home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as un impure or unclean. Oh, hallelujah. That's our key verse. And our key concept is God loves people of all nations. Now, you know, I like to give my keys for kids because when we get into the, 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 the meat of the lesson, it, it gets deep. So, but I like to just make it real simple. The keys for kids for this lesson is number one. God wants his, his, his wants us to share the gospel with all people. Number two, Jesus wants all people everywhere to be saved. And number three, don't keep the good news about Jesus to yourself. You got to tell somebody. And you know, y'all done heard me say this. I got this from my pastor, Pastor Scrubs. He loved to say this, and it's just something that, that penetrates my heart. You, we, 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 we got to love people, and we got to show them the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only with our lips, but with our lives. And the love that we show to folks, that may be the only Bible that they ever read. Glory, hallelujah. And that may be just enough to get them to, to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And so our lesson aims, as we get deep into the lesson, our lesson aim is to evaluate P Peter's reaction to the vision of unclean and unpure animals. And then... Our biblical principle is to understand that the Christian faith is intended to be universal. 
And our daily application that we want to leave when we get through with this lesson is to pray for opportunities. Pray for those divine appointments to present themselves to us that the gospel may cross cultural lines. Oh, hallelujah. There's a couple of things I want to talk about in the beginning of the background of this lesson. First of all, this, this, this area called Caesarea. Caesarea is one of those uh, towns that, 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 that had great commerce. It, it was a seaport town, and, and, and then it had roads, five different major roads that came into, into it. It, was, it, it. And so this was a very strong metropolitan area. It was the city, and 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 and, and, I, and I like this because God, God, God loves people from the city and from the country, from from the rural area to the suburban area. It does not matter where we come from. God loves all people, and we who are in those various areas. You live in the city. You need to talk to somebody in the suburbs. You live in the suburbs, you need to talk to somebody in the city. You live in the city, you need to talk to somebody that lives out in the in the rural area. Because we have to cross cultures. That's what our job is. To, to bring the word of God to everybody. And then find fellowship with other Christians of different cultures. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody right now because too many people in the church, we just cherry pick. We just want, we want our church to be an exclusive church where it's like some kind of club or country club. No, that ain't what the church is all about. The church is for a place for everybody, whether you're blind, crippled, or crazy, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, we should all be able to come together. Oh, hallelujah. One of the things that I love about going to the jail is that in the jail, oh, you got cross culture. <laughs> it's criminals in every in every different culture. And, and when I go into the jail, I, I go and I, I deal with all these different cultures and all these different backgrounds, so that those who 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 are there will have somebody to say, "Wow, they want to include me in. They don't want to exclude me." Oh, hallelujah. And so with this lesson, with this lesson, um, it, 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 was, it was rather difficult for me to, to, to kind of choose which way I was going to go with breaking down this lesson. Um, but I chose in, in my write-up, we're going to deal with Peter's response. We're going to deal with Peter's clar uh, clarifies. And then we're going to deal with Cornelius' uh, uh, explains. But, 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 I just want to walk this lesson for a minute because I, I, I know that, that Peter had this vision. And, and at the same time Peter was having a vision, God was also giving a vision to Cornelius. So I want to deal with it from the vision standpoint. So so here it is. Peter, Peter says in, in verses uh, uh, 19 through 24, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzled over the vision... The Holy Spirit said to him, three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I am the man you're looking for. Why have you come? They said, we are sent by Cornelius, a Roman soldier. He is devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews, a holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day, he went with them and accompanied them uh, by some of the brothers from Joppa. So here it is. Peter was puzzled by the vision. But, but, but the vision God has shown Peter is up in the earlier parts of the text. He was having a vision uh, uh, while he was praying on the housetop. And people go to their housetop back in those days and they pray. And, and God showed him, uh, 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 dropped a, 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 
a, a, a, a, a table, if you will, an uh, apron table down and showed them all kind of unclean animals and told Peter to eat. And Peter was like, no, Lord, I, don't, I ain't going to eat nothing unclean and, and I'm not going to eat anything impure. Because he understood the, the law that was written in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, that, that they were not to consume these unclean animals. They had a dietary restriction under the law of Moses. But God said that law of Moses, that, that, that you have, I, I did that, that, that the people of, of, of Israel, the Jewish people would stay separate from their 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 uh, other counterparts in in Canaan, I, I I put that law into place to keep them pure and set apart to keep them holy. But 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 now a greater has come, Jesus the Christ, and and Jesus the Christ has came to keep us all holy. His death, his burial, and his resurrection is what keeps us holy. So it's not what you consume in your mouth that makes you holy. It, it, it is who you believe in and who you trust in and who you give your life to that makes you holy. Oh, hallelujah. So, so, so that dietary restriction under the law is now covered under God's amazing grace. Because that's what Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection did for us. It gave us amazing grace that we can have remission of our sins, that we can, can be redeemed, that, that we can live a life in liberty. And the liberty that we live in is the liberty of love. The law of love. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. If we live in love, we live in liberty. We live in freedom. We don't have to worry about the law because we're living in love. Oh, if I was if I was preaching this, somebody would out holler and say, say amen, because it, it is good to know that we are free to live and love, to laugh and live as God would have us to do. And so Peter had his vision. But at the same time, Peter was having his vision. God has spoken to Cornelius. And Cornelius was having a vision. Cornelius was having a vision at the same time the, an angel showed up and told him that, that Cornelius, your prayers have been heard by God. Your gifts and your offerings have been seen by God. And God has put a memorial out to you. Meaning that God will always remember that which you have done. Oh, hallelujah. Are we praying to God? Are we giving of our time, our talent, and our treasure that, that God would give a memorial up in heaven to us? Here was a man that was not even saved yet, had not received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and he was having an encounter with God. And here we are. We, we are saved set free and sanctified, and we don't even take the time to pray like Cornelius was praying. We don't take the time to give like Cornelius was giving. Oh, hallelujah. Are you giving of your time, your talent, and your treasure to God? Oh, I'm trying to encourage somebody. If you want a divine appointment with, 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 with God, you want a divine appointment with somebody that needs to know who Jesus Christ is, you got to pray, and you got to give of your time, your talent, and your treasure. What is your time? Get up and pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the evening time. Read and study God's word and show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then go out into the world as you go. Give somebody a smile. Write somebody a card. Send somebody a text message. Let them know that God is still on the throne. Give some words of encouragement. That, that's how you do it. And that's what Cornelius was doing. He was doing this as a Roman centurion soldier. He was doing that. And the people, the Jewish people that were around him, respected him highly. 
even though he was a Gentile, even though he was a Roman soldier that was there to control them. Oh, hallelujah. God can use anybody. God wants everybody to come to the knowledge and the fear of God. Cornelius was a just man and, and one that feared God and had a good report with all the Jews. And he had a vision. And in his vision, God told him, there's a man named Simon whose surname is Peter. He's staying in Joppa. And he's at a tanner's house that's by the sea. And his name, the Tanner's name, is also Simon. Now you have to understand something about Tanners. Tanners were people who took the dead carcass of, of, of animals and, and took their uh, 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 skin off. And then took the hair off the skin. And then they cooked it so that it becomes leather. And all around them, they had to get rid of the flesh and the bones and the, and the fat and all of that and the blood of all of these dead animals. Being a tanner was not a, a job that, that the Jewish people respected. So they were always outside of the city and by the seashore so they could get rid of all that waste. The tanners smell like dead animals all the time because that's what they were doing, cleaning and, and blood. Oh, it was disgusting. But it was interesting to me that where Peter was staying was at a place like this. He was at a tanner's house. But yet even at the tanner's house, he still didn't have any respect for the Gentiles. Oh, but God, God worked on them. So both of them had this vision. And, and then they acted on these visions. First, it was Cornelius acting on his vision. See, just like Cornelius and Peter, we both or we all have to have our thoughts changed. Because our thoughts control our decisions. And our decisions control our actions. And our actions control our destiny. And so, God had worked it that Cornelius' thoughts were now influenced by God's divine directions. Oh, do you hear the word of God? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Oh, when we change our thoughts, when we change our thoughts about how things ought to be, when we change our thoughts, we'll change our decisions and our actions will change and our destiny will change. Oh, Paul, Paul said it good. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. He told us, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, we got to change our thoughts. We got to move from stinking thinking to divine thinking. And that's what Cornelius did. And he sent two of his servants and one of the Roman soldiers to Joppa to get Peter. And now we pick it up as Peter is going through this puzzling situation and these, then God gave him a vision, another vision. Three men have come looking for you. Go down. And, and, and don't hesitate. Don't be wary. I have sent them. God was changing Peter's thoughts. Because his thoughts was changing. His decisions were changing. His actions were changing and his destiny. And so, 
the man arrived and Peter accepted the man and invited them in to his house or to the house that he was staying in. And I thought that was interesting too because we think of the servants as being Jewish, but he invited also this Roman soldier to come in and be with him overnight because they had to wait overnight because it wasn't good for them to travel. They then would travel the next morning. And that's where we pick up the next part of our lesson. The vision has been given. Their thoughts have been changed. And now Peter's thoughts changed his decision. And now he was going in action. Verse 24, and we're going to read down to verse 29. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and his close friends. And as Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But, but Peter pulled him up and said, stand up. I am human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. And Peter told them, you know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile's home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I went, as soon as I was sent for, and now tell me why you have sent for me. Oh, hallelujah. Peter had the vision. Cornelius had the vision. Their thoughts were changed. And now they're having this divine appointment. Peter gets to meet Cornelius. And when Cornelius sees him, Cornelius falls down on his knees and starts worshiping him. And Peter says, no, no, don't be worshiping me. I am just like you. We need to realize that all people are the same. We all need a savior. Nobody needs to be worshiping anybody else. We can respect people. We can be grateful for people. We can be thankful for people. But we all need a savior. And we, we who are saved, we are all saved by grace. Oh, hallelujah. And so they have this divine appointment. And God had, had arranged this divine appointment and led both of these men with their thoughts and gave them vision. And here it was, Cornelius was expecting. We're going to have opportunities where people, we, we will have divine appointment with people who are expecting to see us. They've been waiting on us to come. God has already plowed the ground. The, 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 the ground has been plowed and all we have to do is come in and put the seed of God's word into their hearts. In some cases, not only is the ground plowed and the seed has been planted, but the, 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 the plant has begun to grow and all we got to do is come in and harvest it. Oh, because it's God that gives the increase. Are you ready to go for God? Have, have you had a vision of going somewhere and spreading the word of God? Have your thoughts been changed to go across cultural lines? Well, if your thoughts have been changed, make a decision. And your decision will control your actions. And your actions will control your destiny. And so now, we're going to look at this last part of the lesson. Verses 29, um, no, verses 30, all the way down to 33. Cornelius replied, 
Four days ago, I was praying and in my house and about the same time, the three o'clock hour, the ninth hour in the afternoon, suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon of Tanner, who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now, we are all here waiting before God to hear the message that the Lord has given you. Oh, hallelujah. They were waiting in expectation for the word that God was getting ready to give them. People are waiting for you. People are waiting for me. They're waiting for us to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. God has made the divine appointment. He set it up. And all we have to do is walk into our destiny. And people will hear the word of God and their lives will be changed. Peter, outside of our text, opened his mouth, he says, and started preaching the word of God. In truth, he said, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching grace through Jesus Christ, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, you know, which has been proclaimed throughout all Judea and beginning and Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth and with the Holy Spirit and with power and sent about doing good things, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him and he and we are witnesses to all these things which he has did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem and whom they killed by hanging him on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day, showing him openly, not to all the people, but to the witnesses chosen before by God, even to us. Who ate and drank with him after his he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he who has ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead to him all the prophets witness and that through him and his name whoever believes in him shall receive remission of his sins. And while Peter was still preaching the Holy Spirit fell upon them that were in Cornelius' house. And the Holy Spirit fell on them and they all were filled with the Spirit and, and given uh, the point out of the gift of the Spirit was on those who were now Gentiles. And the Peter and those other men that came from Joppa with him, saw how the Holy Spirit had fell on them. And they said, look, what's preventing them from being baptized? And all of them were baptized in the name of Jesus. And Peter stayed there a few more days. Oh, what a divine appointment. God has a divine appointment for us. These divine appointments are orchestrated by God to fulfill his plan. We should obey the urging of the Holy Spirit as God opens doors for the gospel. Let the Lord leading overcome any long held belief that lets our differences divide us. Be available to show and to share the gospel 
with those who need to hear it. And remember, God is always listening. And when we share the good news of Jesus Christ with others, he's right there with us. In conclusion, God showed Peter that it was very important to share the gospel with everyone. Even if people are different from us, it should not keep us from telling them the good news of Jesus. It is important for us to reach out to all people tell them about God's love for them. Let us pray. Dear Father, God, thank you for you love everyone and you want everyone to be saved. Help us to look past our differences and share the gospel with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we leave Facebook and leave this recording, we want to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. You've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ today. You've heard about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So if you pray this prayer with us, we know that you will be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Be blessed. This Sunday we're going to have a special prayer meeting at 10.45, we won't be live on Facebook, but we will be on the conference call. If you want to join in, we're going to be praying for those in the path of, of uh, Hurricane Harvey. Uh, we prayed for him on Friday night, and we thank God for the answering of our prayers. The hurricane did come. It did a lot of damage, but very few lives have been lost. I only think one has been lost at this point. And the place where it landed was optimal to do the least damage. We thank God for answering our prayers. And we asking God to continue to watch over them as the hurricane moves up inshore and then coming back out and coming back around. And we're going to still be praying for those in the path. Be blessed on Facebook. And if you want to join us on the conference call to discuss this lesson, you can call us at 910 218 0531. Be blessed, everybody.